Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Alaa Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University. I want to discuss with you some clinical quiz in gynecology, and let's start our journey with the first question, identify this instrument and dimension one indication. Okay, look to this picture, please. This is Sam's speculum. This instrument is Sam's speculum. Okay, it is used during vaginal examination in cases we are searching for vesico vaginal fistula, for example. The patient lies in Sam's position and we retract the posterior vaginal wall using Sam's speculum. While the patient in Sam's position to see the anterior vaginal wall and if there is fistula or any other problem. Okay. Also can be used in cases of rectal vaginal fistula and the other indication. Okay. So Sam's speculum is vaginal retract. Okay. And the one indication you can say during vaginal examination in Sam's position. To diagnose vesico vaginal fistula. Let us go to the next. Identify this instrument and mention three indications. Look to this picture. This is a metal vaginal speculum, sulfur retaining, it's called casco speculum. So you can say casco metal vaginal speculum. This one is reusable has two blades and handle and one screw here and it is different than another metal vaginal speculum called the gravis in that the other one contain another screw here down connect the upper and the lower plates okay and has a broader blades the gravis one has a broader plate and the anterior or the upper one is shorter than the lower one okay so if you found two screw this is graves metal vaginal speculum if you found one screw it is casco metal vaginal speculum so what is in this picture is the casco metal vaginal speculum it is a self-retaining so the the gynecologist can do many procedure while he is inserting this speculum without need for any assistance or any help okay so what are the indication for using casco metal vaginal speculum it is used during vaginal examination to explore the portion of the cervix to diagnose any cervical lesion in the portion like ectomy, like polyp, like cervical carcinoma. Also to, to examine the vaginal wall for any lesions, inflammation, or ulcer, or tumor, okay? So this is some of the indication is one to do gynecologic examination to find any cervical or vaginal lesions. Another indication is to use casco speculum during certain procedures like during colposcopy, like doing uh, cervical smear, like uh, inserting ID, like doing hysterosalpingogram. So, casco metal speculum can be used in different procedures, also, as I said right now. Okay? Let us go to the next, identify this tool and dimension one indication. This is a sight brush used for cervical smear during screening for CIN, which is cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. So, for screening of cervical carcinoma, okay, and detecting the debris cancerous lesion, which is CIN. We are doing a smear using sight brush inserted at the external os, okay, and rotated 360 degree, then repeated another one, and spread the smear on a slide and spray with fixator and send for bad test, okay. 
or Papaniklu, yes. Okay. Also, you can insert the cyto brush inside the saline and send the specimen to to be analyzed by the. Okay. This is a cyto brush used for the cervical smear. In case while we are doing screening for cervical carcinoma. Okay. Or the pre cancerous lesion CIF. Okay, let us go to the next picture. Identify this procedure and dimension one indication and the two complications. Look to this picture, please. This is LEAP. LEAP L A E P. L E E P. This is abbreviation of Loop Electrosurgical Excision Procedure. Okay. So this is LEAP, as I said. Loop electrosurgical excision procedure, and one indication it is used in case of CIN3 lesion, cervical intraxial grade 3, okay, or severe dysplasia, or in cases with there is difference between the colposcopic results and the BAP test. So we wanted to be sure, so we remove this transformation zone and send for histopathological evaluation. Can be used as a diagnostic and treatment also for removal of this suspicious area. Also can be used for removal of the portion of the, this part of the portion of the cervix in the, the area of transformation zone which is the area between primary and the secondary squamocolumnar junction in cases of some benign lesions like cervical polyp also in genital warts like Roman papilloma virus. Also, as I said before, for CIN3 lesions, okay, so it can be used as a diagnostic and as a therapeutic also model of treatment. We remove this part with deep. There is another or alternative names which is rather than leap, which is called large loop excision of the transformation zone. Okay. Let us go to the next Identify this instrument and dimension three indications. This is a Higgard dilator. This one is single ended. This one is double ended. Okay. As we know, Higgard dilator with different sizes are used to dilate the cervix for different reasons or different indication before doing D and C. Okay, dilatation and decurtage. So I need before curtage to do dilatation to facilitate the insertion of the metal curet. So I need to dilate the cervix using Hager dilate. Okay. So in the operation of DNC, Hager dilator is used to dilate the cervix. This is one indication. Another indication, in cases with cervical stenosis, I need to dilate the cervix because the cervix is abnormally stenosed. Okay, so this is another indication. In certain surgical procedure, like fuzzer gel operation, I need also to dilate the cervix using Hager dilator. So, Hager dilator is used for many indications. As I said before, let us go to the next. Identify this method of investigation and dimension two indications. This method of investigation is hysterosalpingogram. We inject the dye through the cervical canal. The dye pass through the uterus, as you see, and pass to the tubes, the fallopian tubes. Okay, so then we do X-ray. 
three films, one after injection of four centimeter or five centimeter of the dye, then the remaining five centimeter is injected and they take another the second film. Then the third film is taken after half an hour if we are using urographene dye. Okay, so this is hysterosalpingogram. This is the answer of the first part of the question. Two indication. The, the first indication is to test for tubal patency. As you see, you can see the dye passed through the post tube. So it is used to test for tubal patency in cases with infertility. So in basic infertility investigation, one of the most important investigation is to do test for tubal patency using hysterosalpingogram. So this is the first indication. Second indication is to diagnose any intracavitary lesion will appear as a filling defect inside the uterus. Okay, so diagnosis of intracavitary lesion. The third indication is in cases of congenital uterine malformation like bicoronate uterus, semicoronate uterus, uh, septate uterus, and so on. Okay. So let us go to the next question. Identify this instrument and mention three indications for its use. This instrument is over the speculum. Okay. It is used to retract. It is considered one of the vaginal tractor. Self rotating. It is displayed retract the posterior vaginal wall during surgery, like anterior corporophy in case of cyst to seal okay also during the NC can be used also in any cervical uh, surgery like polypectomy okay so this this over retractor is used to, to explore the anterior vaginal wall and the portion of the cervix during certain surgical procedure, as I said, during anterior corporophy, in cases with cyst to seal, also in, for surgery like DNC, like cervical polypectomy, and so on. Okay. Let us go to the next comment on this hysteroscopy picture. This is hysteroscopy and this is a trying cavity and there is intracavitary lesion. This is leomyom. And which type? This is L0 because it looks that it is, has a pedicle. So this is L0 or type 0 leomyoma. Completely intracavitary. This leomyoma completely intracavitary and has a pedicle. And this stroscopy picture showing this leomyoma inside the uterine cavity. Okay, of course, if this mass is four centimeter or less, can be removed also by stroscopy and by resection by using hysteroscope, resectoscope. Okay, okay, this is my comment on this picture. As you know. L0 according to the figure classification 2011 and this considered L0 as I said. Okay. Let us go to the next. Identify this instrument and dimension two indications. This is a trine sound. Okay, metal trine sound. Used to measure the length of the trine cavity okay we know that the the trans sound is graded in centimeter so we can measure the length of the uterus and also we can detect the position of the uterus is it AVF uterus antiverted flexed uterus or retroverted flexed uterus RVF okay so we measure the length of the uterus we can detect the position of the uterus, is it AVF or RVF? Also, 
ultrasound is beneficial to measure the, the length of the uterus and if there is supravaginal elongation of the cervix during planning for surgery for gentle prolapse and we want to know if there is supravaginal elongation of the cervix so we are going to do phasar gel operation and the amputation of the cervix and so on so we can measure the length of the uterus and the length of the cervix and to know if there is supravaginal elongation of the cervix or not Let us go to the next question. Comment on this procedure. As you see, this procedure, this is a metal curette, and this is the uterus. We are doing endometrial curettage. Taking, we can take endometrial biopsy in cases of abnormal uterine bleeding. Okay. We can do also fractional curettage to take a biopsy. Fractional curettage means what? means we are going to do endocervical curettage this is the first sample then endometrial curettage for local real for lower part of the uterus this is the second sample then endometrial curettage for high corporeal the upper part of the uterus this is the third sample so we will send for histopathology three sample one endocervical one low corporeal and one high corporeal so this is curettage and the vitreal sampling using metal curette. Let us go to the next question. Identify three causes of abnormal uterine bleeding in this picture. Okay, you should remember the, the FIGO classification according to the etiology of abnormal uterine bleeding, whether structural or non structural, and if it is structural. The abbreviation of palm and the non-structural the abbreviation of coin the palm coin classification of figo okay you remember that okay so look to this picture please this is the polyp the endometrial polyp one of the causes of abnormal uterine bleeding and this is adenomyosis another cause of abnormal uterine bleeding and this is leomyoma so i found here three causes in this blue arrow polyp endometrial polyp adenomyosis and the leomyoma you remember palm coil p a l m p for polyp a for adenomyosis l for leomyoma so i have here three causes I can find more cause, another cause. Here is endometrial carcinoma, also another cause, which is malignancy in palm M, letter M, malignancy. This is another one. Okay, this three blue arrow, as I said before, in polyp, adenomyosis, and the leomyoma. In this picture, this is the last question. Thank you. I wanted to remember you about my textbook published on Amazon in January 2022. Textbook of obstetrics and textbook of gynecology. You can search for them.